What is up everybody? Hope you're doing good and welcome back to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today we're going to be covering the Prismatic VFX pack for DaVinci Resolve. This pack is designed specifically for DaVinci Resolve and has a lot of cool features in it. So this video is going to be showcasing what's included in the pack and if you've already gotten the pack it's going to be showing you the differences between each of the presets. Let's jump right in with the installation. All right, so to install a pack, first thing you wanna do, open up DaVinci Resolve and go to the Fusion tab. Okay, we'll let that load up and here we are. Now, open up your file that you downloaded and you're gonna find, this is the pack that we included, you're gonna find a .drfx file. What you have to do is drag this file into the grid area of DaVinci Resolve. If you drag it anywhere else, um, it's not gonna work. You just have to drag into this lower section here and it's gonna ask you, do you want to install? For me, it says overwrite since I already installed it and I'm gonna click yes and it's as simple as that, it's installed. All right, so once you've installed it, we can head on over to the edit page. Make sure your effects tab is open and you're gonna find the effects under the effects tab, Cinepa Cinepax Prismatic VFX. All right, before we go into a few effects individually, I just wanna talk about how these effects work really, really great on psych walls and places where your uh, actor is isolated on you know a white a white background or maybe like back black background or something that's going to help a lot um, you can go ahead and preview what each effect is going to look like just by dragging your cursor over the effect now once you drag it onto your footage definitely make sure that was a little too crazy for me let's do this one uh, once you drag it onto your footage definitely make sure that you have your uh, render cache enabled. So go to playback, go to render cache, and set it to smart. I usually like to set it to smart, and that's gonna allow it to automatically render some previews out so you can get smooth playback. The final thing I wanna cover here is, as you can see, I got this cool filter applied to this guy jumping over the city. However, by default, this footage uh, doesn't match the aspect ratio of our timeline. So if I set this back to project settings, you can see that um, I am getting these black bars and that does not work well with the effect, obviously. So if you're ever running into a scenario where you're getting these black bars and everything, that does impact the effect itself. So make sure you change the scaling mode to fill. All right, okay, let's jump into each one and show you how you can customize them. All right, so let's start with the center blur. So these are not going to work well on footage like this. There's way too much white in the background to show anything. We're going to go for something like this, where we have our actor filling up most of the frame. And the center blurs are going to add kind of like a halo effect around the uh, outside of the frame. So if I press play, it's going to kind of give it that nice dreamy feel. Um, each center blur effect has a slightly different preset as to how it, it makes that effect, you know, interact with the footage. All right, so let's click on the effects tab over here and then click on fusion. And here's our center blur uh, attributes. So the first thing that you have is the soft edge. So if we take this all the way down, you're going to see that all this is is a mask of where the uh, effect is not interacting with the footage. So if you want your actor to be visible, uh, I'm gonna increase the soft edge and I can center it over the center of their face and their face is going to remain visible. And we can adjust the width and the height of that. We can make it kind of an oval. If, if you see here, uh, we have full ability to do that. Now, we if you don't wanna use the sliders here, you can actually go to this dropdown and go down to Fusion Overlay and that's gonna become visible. So you can actually manipulate it with a tool uh, rather than just using those sliders. And you can see it's adjusting those sliders in real time. All right, great. So once we have that position, we also have our apply mode. So every single preset for the entire pack has this option and you can change the apply mode to multiply and it's gonna darken the image uh, or you can change it to difference. You can do whatever you want to really make some unique combinations here. So we'll change the difference and leave it like that. All right, cool, I'm liking that. Uh, next thing we have is the clone scale. So that's going to uh, make the uh, effect a little bit larger. You can see that it's affecting basically what it's do. It's duplicating the footage and making it larger so we can change how much larger it makes it. 
Uh, let's switch this back to uh, lighten so we can see what it's doing. We have aberration, chromatic aberration, so we can change the distance of that, change the strength of it, and change the blur as well. So if we take the blur down, it's not going to be as blurry. Um, then we have streak strength, so you can see that it's making everything kind of a directional blur. Uh, we're going to take that down, so now everything's sharp, as well as the angle of that we're able to adjust. All right, so just like that, we've already really changed how this interacts with our footage. Um, and we can go like that and all of a sudden we have a very different effect of how it's interacting. The final thing that every single preset also has is the fade in and out animation. So if I go ahead and press play, you're going to see that there's this animation where it slides in. Okay. And if I go to the end of the clip, it's going to slide out. If you have any issues with that or you don't want it enabled, you just uncheck that and that animation is no, no longer going to play. All right, so that's the center blur, and that's how that one works. All right, the next set is the circular swirl. So we can go through, and you can see there's a variety of different patterns of essentially fisheye effects that it applies to the footage. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kind of drag this one in, and it's very similar to the center blur. If we have our tooltip open, we can actually adjust where it's effect not affecting the footage. So let's say our actor was to the left. We can put it to the left. Um, and... After that, we have our standard controls. We can change the apply mode. We can change it to like burn. We can change the clone scale, which is just the scale of, of the uh, composite. Uh, chromatic aberration, strength, blur, and the fade in and out animation if we don't want it to be animated. All right, cool. All right, next, let's move on to the crystals, which the crystal patterns are some of the coolest effects in this pack, in my opinion. So. Um, the way that the crystal packs are laid out is the each preset here is a different pattern, essentially. So if I were to just drag this first one in and drag it down here, you're going to see that we have the ability to change the apply mode the, to something like darken or color burn, linear dodge, make, make it glow. And then we can also, let's go ahead and just set that back to default for now. Uh, we can also change the aberration, chromatic aberration distance. So this is where it's going to be a little more prominent than the first two presets that we went over, uh, as well as the strength. So if we really want it to just be like a lot of chromatic aberration stuff, we can just make it really intense and bring that all the way up, as well as the blur is editable here too. All right, next up we have the echo effect. So if I just kind of swipe through here, you can kind of get the the idea. It's a really cool sort of duplication effect that's going to kind of make, make these linear stripes. Now, the cool thing about the echo effect is you actually have the ability to change the area that it's copying. So uh, let's go ahead and open up our effects tab. Again, a reminder, switch it to the fusion overlay button right here with this drop down. And that's going to show your little tooltip. So if we move this tooltip around, you're going to see it's actually copying wherever I move this tooltip. Uh, so I'm going to kind of, I can move it all, all the way over here. I can keep it on her face for right now, which I think I'm going to do, and leave it right there. Um, so that's all that these first few attributes are uh, editing. Uh, we can also adjust the angle here. So I can like change the angle, but I prefer to keep it straight up. I think that looks best. Okay. Again, you can change the apply mode. Uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, the clone offset is going to adjust how far these clones are in terms of space together. So you can adjust that that way. You can adjust it to go the other direction if you need to uh, and just kind of do whatever you want. Clone time offset. This is really cool. You can actually increase this so that each clone basically has a time delay. So let's go ahead and play this. And by increasing the tome, the clone time offset by three, you're going to see that there's a delay in each frame. Obviously, this starts to slow things down. Uh, your rendering time is going to get a lot, lot slower by doing that, but it's really cool if you want to mess with that. Next thing is the clone scale. So this is going to make each copy get bigger or smaller depending on what you, you choose to do. Uh, I don't really like making things smaller. It starts to get that clipping of the, the top of the screen. So we'll make it a little bit bigger and just leave it as is. Every single one has chromatic aberration controls. So we can do that and disable a, the fade in and out animation. All right.
All right, next up is our spiral. Now I'm gonna go through this one pretty quickly because it's the exact same thing as the crystal filter, but whereas the crystal filter just kind of duplicates our main actor around, the spiral one is gonna add a rotation to that. So you're gonna see that each, each copy kind of rotates and might, you know, blend into itself and rotate and create these really cool kaleidoscope patterns that you're not really gonna get with the crystal effect. So if I drag this one in, you're going to see we have our apply mode. We can change it to screen, make it brighter, uh, aberration distance and strength, as well as the fade in, fade out. All right, that just about covers that one. The split crystal one is really cool because it has these sharp edges. So if I kind of put this one in the frame, you're going to see that we get these cool kind of designs that still blend with the footage underneath it, though. Uh, my favorite one is split crystal five because we get this cool triangle effect here. So I'm going to drag this one in and it has the exact same uh, attributes as most other ones. Apply mode, aberration distance, strength and blur. OK, final two presets are the streak presets. So these have a little more options. So let's go ahead and show you how they work. So the first one that we drag in is going to make this kind of like very ghostly impression of our actor here. Now, when we bring up the tool tip for that, uh, what we can do is we're actually affecting where this ghost appears. It's kind of a big rectangle mask that we're moving around. So if we were to bring the soft edge all the way down, there we can see our mask much more clearly. And I can go ahead and just kind of position it where I want. And you're going to see that I'm going to put it right there. And that means our actors going to be duplicated there as as a ghost, of course, we can change our apply mode. So if I change it to something like darker color, we're going to get a lot of different interesting blend modes, you're going to see also that this also has a kind of streaky effect blending with the ghost as well. So there's there's it's just a kind of cool and interesting effect that you're not going to find elsewhere. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and position this here to get this more, make the streaks more visible. And our final two options is we can increase that streak. So let's go increase it so it's longer. And we can also change the angle of the streak, but I'm kind of happy with where they are. Okay, final thing, I can change the clone offset and how it inter interacts with the base footage. So we'll keep it where it is as well as the fade in and out animation. So if I go ahead and play that through, we end up with a pretty darn cool ghosting effect, just like that. Okay, streak two is a very different effect. Let me show you how that one works. So if I bring streak two in now, you're gonna see it's actually the opposite. The mask that we're controlling here is affecting where the effect does not take place. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over our main actor because that means the effect is not going to affect our main actor which we want to keep her visible and again I can bring the soft edge down if I ever wanted to fully visualize this mask okay so let's put that there and now we have this really cool kind of just blurry directional blur and we can again increase the length of that or bring it all the way down but let's go ahead and bring it up because I like it up like that we can change the angle of our mask, sorry, that's only affecting the mask. Can't change the angle of the blur for this one just because of the way it has distortion effects applied to it. And then we can also change the clone offset. So if we wanna move it really far out, we can get these crazy weird effects. And let's go ahead and soften this mask again and press play. And just like that, we get this really weird ghosting effect and it looks sick, I love it. All right, and that about sums it up for the entire pack. So each of these are fully customizable, easy to work with, and just drag and drop out of the box. However, if you wanted to go further with any of these, you can actually go ahead and let me let me choose like the crystal, like this one right here. Let's drag crystal five onto our footage, go to the effects tab, and click this little fusion icon here. So with the little magic wand here, if we click this, essentially it's gonna open up the node graph. So if you happen to know fusion, we're not gonna go into detail in this video, but if you happen to know how to use fusion, you are welcome to go in and actually mess with the inner workings of any of these presets and control them to the absolute fullest that you need. So 
um, as you can see right here, we have a mask. If I were to visualize this, this is just a mask that we start with. And then um, this is the fade in and out animation. So if we go to the start, you're gonna see that all it's doing is applying that animation to our mask. And then it's gonna pass it along to these multiple transforms where it gets duplicated. So if I start clicking on these, you're gonna see this is how the crystal effect is made. Each one of these transforms are basically placing a new version, a new copy of our base footage. And now that you're in the node editor here, let me close the keyframe, you actually have the ability to move around each of these copies individually or add more if you need to. So that's all available for you. You can go ahead and you know get into the, the nitty gritty of it if you want to, if you're familiar with Fusion, or go ahead and start learning if you want. So uh, it's all there, it's all accessible, it's not, it's not locked away. Um, just be aware, if you did start editing the, the Fusion graph, it's likely gonna break some of these controls here. Right now they're still working, but every once in a while there's a chance you might break the relationship of how these controls here are built. So, um, but you can always revert back to the original and just drag and drop from the effects tab if you ever get to that, that point. All right, well, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it uh, helpful and useful and you were able to understand a little bit more of the nuances of how we, each of these work. So yeah, that's the pack. I'm excited to see what kind of music videos and films get made with it. If you guys enjoy it, make sure to spread the word. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Peace.